in the world who hated him. Why did he do that? So that they might live. That's why he did it. So that you and I could live. Oh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. Turn over there a minute. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 21. The Bible says, For this to you this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Follow his steps. Look at John chapter 7. Turn with me to John chapter 7. I want you to notice verse 2 through 5. John chapter 7. Notice verse 2. The Bible says, Now the feast of the tabernacle was at hand. His brothers therefore said to him, Depart from here and go into Judea, that your disciples also may see the works that you are doing. For no one does anything in secret while he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, you show yourself to the world. For even his brothers did not believe in him. How sad, huh? His own family didn't believe that he was the Son of God. You see, Jesus lived his life for the good of others. He still was going to go to the cross no matter what the world thought, no matter what his family thought, he was going to go to the cross. Amen? The lesson's clear. We are to be like Jesus this morning. Church, we need to be like Jesus this morning. We are to be like Jesus this morning. Amen? Even if we are ridiculed, we are to serve others. Even if we are hated and misunderstood, we are to serve others. We as a church need to serve others in the community as well amongst ourselves. Amen? I'm telling you, it blows the minds of this school. We as a fellowship help them. They've never seen nothing like this. Secondly, notice the encouragement of the scriptures in verse 4. Verse 4, there's comfort in the scriptures, amen? The idea of this verse is that when we go through this life serving the Lord, there will be times of discouragement. It's going to happen. And there's going to be times of defeat. Every time I think of the word defeat, I that commercial when I was a kid watching... Uh, why will a sports? You know, I got the agony of defeat. Goes down that thing, a ski jumper, boom! That's defeat, man. We're going to have those times. When they come, and they will come, we need to look into the Word of God. There is where you will find encouragement. Amen? Yes. That's where you'll find encouragement. In John chapter 19, verse 28. Look at that. Look at over to John chapter 19. And notice number 28. John chapter 19, verse 28. The Bible says, After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said what? I thirst. I thirst thirst. Notice that the scripture might be fulfilled. Every time you, when you're discouraged and defeated, if you run to the word of God, it will fulfill you. God will speak to you. God will answer you. And God will take care of what you're seeking for. Your life will be fulfilled. This is what I want you to I want you to ponder this this morning, church. Ponder this. When you and I are ready to throw in the towel, call it quits. I know I've been there. <laughs> I've been there. 
One time I got so frustrated in ministry, I went into the woods, I said, Jesus, I quit. I took my Bible and I threw it about 50, 60 feet and said, I'm not going to do anything for you anymore. I'm tired of people. I'm tired of everything. You know, the minute I threw that off my hands, I go, oh, I felt it. <laughs> the Holy Spirit just convicted me. And I grabbed that Bible. I just wept. I said, oh, forgive me, Lord. <laughs> you know, I was, I was defeated. And uh, there are going to be times like that. Yes. When that happens, you've got to get yourself into the scriptures and God will enable you to continue to go on. If you don't, let me say it again, if you don't do this, believe you ever been angry, ever, ever get so frustrated, you want to call it quits? When you get to that point, if you don't get into the Word of God, let God change your heart, then you will be critical, mean-spirited, and intolerant of others. And by the way, you'll be just plain hard to get along with. I'll say it a thousand times again, the most, the most miserable person on planet Earth is a, per, a Christian who turns his back on God and says, that's it, I'm not going to do anything more for you. That is one miserable person. Because if they're truly saved, the Holy Spirit's going to prick you, prick you, prick you, prick you. And that's what makes you miserable. <laughs> Until you say, that's it, okay, surrender. God says, well, that's what I've been waiting for. <laughs> it's not easy, though. Listen, I hope and pray as a church, not only do we tolerate each other, but that we encourage each other, amen, and encourage each other to get into the Word. Thirdly, lastly, notice the delight of tolerance. In our text, verse 5 and 6, 5 through 7. Let me get back over there. Verses 5 through 7. Now may the God of patience and comforts grant you to be like-minded toward one another according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, receive one another just as Christ also received us to the glory of God. What, notice the delight of tolerance here. Paul uses a word four times in these, these verses. Four times he uses it. The word, this word is the secret of any, if you want to use the word, great church. This is what makes a powerful church. The secret of a great church is found in the little word, one. One. What makes a great church? Unity. When Baptist Bible, when, when, when Bethlehem Baptist Fellowship comes to the place where we can love one another in spite of our differences and accept one another in spite of our disagreements, then we can truly come to worship and worship God is a great church. Amen? Listen. The Bible says in verse 5 to be like-minded. We are to be one in purpose. We are to be one in accord. Church members, want, we need to see people saved and we need to see people brought to the Lord Jesus Christ. And also, when we see our members hurting, I don't care what they've done. You forgive them and move on. Amen? Amen? I don't care what they've done in their life. Forgive them, help them, counsel them, and move on. Amen? Amen. One of the greatest tragedies at church today, they don't practice Galatians chapter 5. Well, we, you and I, those that are pastors and elders or those who are, more, or who are spiritual, we need to restore those who have fallen. We're to, we're to restore them. Bring them back into the church. Amen? Amen. We had the wonderful privilege of doing that in Cortland. Remember that, Kathy? Well, one guy, one of my members, I woke up one morning with a paper. Oh, my goodness. He made front page news. He did a hor horrific sin. 
And he got arrested, and to make a long story short, well, it made the front page news, so we had to have a church meeting and say, Ugh.